Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Heavenly Father, we adore you, we praise you, we magnify your holy name. You are the God of all gods. There is no other God like you. You are worthy to be praised. Your glory is above the heavens. We stand in awe of you because of your greatness and your love which you have for us, your children. How majestic is your name in all the earth. You formed the earth from nothing and created all living things and human beings. We worship you for who you are, God Almighty, and so we bless your holy name. All praise and glory belongs to you, Father Almighty. Lord God, we confess our sins to you. We have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and we are truly sorry. We have not shown love to others as we should have done. We have been unkind and uncaring. As First John 1 9 says, that if we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all our righteousness. So let us come humbly before the throne of grace and confess our sins, sins of commission and sins of omission those things we have left undone that we should have done. Father God, we thank you that you have loved us so much that you sent your Son Jesus Christ into this world to save us from our sins. We thank you for our fellowship with each other. We thank you for our families, friends, and neighbors. We thank you for sparing this island by abatis from devastation of the coronavirus and the volcanic ash. We thank you for our stable society where we can worship without fear. As the psalmist says, Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. And so we give thanks to you again 
as we seek to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father God, we ask your blessings on these devotions tonight and grant wisdom and understanding to the one who will bring the meditation. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior, with thanksgiving. Amen.
Sovereign God, Gracious Father, You are Creator and Sustainer of Your world. In the beginning after the creation of Your masterpiece, You invited mankind to share in Your wonderful presence. Our hands were clean and our hearts were pure, and there was no vanity or deceit in our heart or mouth, and we enjoyed sweet communion with You. You came down in the cool of the day, and we had conversation. Father, we long for this relationship again. We confess that we sinned and severed that relationship. We ask your forgiveness from our sins and all our unrighteous acts. May our faith be strengthened and our love for you and our love for our fellow man be exemplary. This we pray to Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. The scripture reading is taken from Psalm 24. Reading verse 1 and 2. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Let us pray. Dear Father, your word is yourself. Have thine own way, Lord. You lead, you will follow closely by your sight. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Not the work of dredging or reclamation. The earth is the Lord, and this is indisputable. For he hath founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. It is his. When we go to the Genesis reading for the creation, Genesis chapter 1, I'll read from verse 2b. And the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and separated the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plant yielding seed, fruit trees bearing fruit, which is their seed, each according to its kind upon the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds according to their kind, and trees bearing fruit, in which is their kind, according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. He made it. God formed it. He founded it. He fitted it for the use of man. All the matter that made the earth in creation was made from nothing. He made it according to his will and his counsel. His own mind created the earth. He made it himself. He made it for himself so that he is sole and entire and absolute owner for all is under him. The Psalm of David reminds us in Psalm 89 verse 11 and 12. The heavens are thine, the earth also is thine, the world and all that is in it. Thou hast founded them, the north and the south thou hast created them. Tabor and Hermon joyously praise thy name. God made this earth and he did what no other person could do. He made it by the might, his might and power. And to think that it was founded upon the seas, upon the floods, and we would consider that a bad building practice because we know the sea is always churning and the floods are always rolling. So why would you want to create something on what we would consider an, an unstable foundation? But only God can do this. Only God can build upon anything and everything. 
He has the almighty power to do it. And when he does these things, it serves his purpose. The waters which at first covered the earth and rendered it unfit for habitation, God ordered under the earth that the dry land might appear. And so there are as the foundations of it. He sustains and he continues it. He established it. He fixed it so that the earth is passed on from one generation to another generation. And we know that his providence rules creation. The founding of the earth upon floods should also remind us in the spiritual sense that we should not build on what is slippery, what will make a mess of our building. Remember, that the wise man built on the rock, the foolish man built on sand. But God, in his wisdom, is able to build on both rock, sand, water. He can build on all the elements. He is truly owner and creator of the earth. We, in our simple way of enhancing infrastructure, sometimes we dredge, we, we go to places in the rivers, and we reclaim land. We reclaim land from the sea. But God did not have to get equipment. He just spoke the word and the world came in to be it. We are stewards of this earth. We're reminded that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The land, all the minerals, I like how it is recorded in Genesis chapter 2, verse 10 to 12. A river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and there it divided and became four rivers. The name of the first is Fishon. It is the one which flows around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the goal of that land is good. Then we have Debulum and Onyx stones are there. So God created the earth. And in the belly of the earth, we can find silver and gold and copper and bauxite and coal and oil and gases and water, we can find silicone, we can find clay, we can find lime, we can find stone, we can find sand, we can find crystals and all the other minerals are in the earth. These mines are in the belly of the earth. So we can now understand the term Mother Earth because the earth is pregnant with God's riches. Then on the surface of the earth, we have even the richest ground provisions. We have vegetables. We have fruits. We have timber. We have the beasts of the field. We have the forest. We have the cattle on a thousand hills. And after all of this was done, this is what God did. In Genesis 2 and 15, the Lord God took man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. David, the writer of Psalm 24, writes in Psalm 50 and verse 10, For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills are mine. We owe everything to God. Without him, nothing that is made would not have been made. But sometimes we get ahead of ourselves and we misunderstand the terms of our stewardship for God. So we work, we work our lands, we get our houses, and all of this is good. All of these improvements on the earth happens by the wisdom of God. Because of our skill and our industry, we have all of this. But nothing that we are skillful with is ours. It all came from God. 
everything that we build with comes from the earth. It is God's. So it is truly just a loan to us. So let us get our focus correct. We avoid the mistake of our four parents in the Garden of Eden. We don't get misled by the evil one. It's as soon as they were consumed by self and wanted to be equal with God, sin entered the world. They forgot that they were stewards and never the creators of the world. Let us be obedient to our stewardship, for we are accountable to God. They were not owners of, but occupiers until he comes. They have not realized that they have stolen God's resources, misused his name, and misled the peoples. And this is something that we were warned about in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11 to 14. Take heed lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his ordinances and his statutes, which I have commanded you this day, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built goodly houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. These indeed in the kingdom of grace are duly looked upon as emptiness, all that we have. We are reminded in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 19 to 20, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where the moth and rust consume, and where the thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where the thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So remember that the earth is the Lord's. It is full of God's riches. So he made the earth, the land, the sea, all the parts in the region of the earth are the Lord's. Everything belongs to the Lord's. All are under his purview. He can see everything. And as we would have sung when we were a little younger, we all loved that him. He got the whole world in his hand. He has all of it in his hand. And it is done this way so that wherever his children goes, they will be able to find some comfort in this world. Because we can use the resources, we can, we can, we can use everything that there is. But unless we give him thanks and praise and we do not make these things our gods, this is quite okay with God. Once we bring honor, and glory to his name. This is, the, 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 the world was created for this. When Adam and Eve knew no sin and were not selfish, everything went well. Good conversation. Good times to hang out with God. But when Satan placed in their heart that they could become equal. Now, they didn't even take time to think. Could they have created the world that they were in, could they have prepared a garden with all the trees and food and all these things? Yet when he said to them, I don't mind what God is telling you. He doesn't want you to have this wisdom. Well, they did prove Satan wrong because he was telling them that they can have wisdom. 
We know that Satan is a liar. And he lied to our foreparents. And they fell for the lie. God is interested in the earth, the sea, and its people. The earth is, was only completed when God placed man as caretaker of his creation. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. This is what David says in Psalm 95 and verse 7. We ourselves are not our own. Ezekiel makes it clear in Ezekiel 18 verse 4. All souls are mine, says God. For he is the former, the maker of our bodies. And he's the father of our spirits. Our tongue are not our own because our tongue should only be involved in bringing honor and glory and praise to his name. We misuse the tongue. Therefore, everybody is skeptical about what we are saying because all truth does not come from our mouth. And we're reminded that a fountain cannot bring forth sweet water and bitter water at the same time. So people will not be confused by us. They will just ignore us because they know this truth. You see, God is interested in us. Even those children who don't know him, who don't have a relationship with him, they are still his. He created man. And by man's reproduction, we are here. So we are God's people. We are his children and the sheep of his pasture. So there is no, there is no disputing who the world, who the earth, who the sea, and who the people belong to. What we must do is to take stock of our lives and don't fall into the area where we want to play God. We want to say what should happen to man and what should happen to his earth without consulting God. Remember, he knows the beginning and he knows the end. And he's such a wonderful God that even before he started, before he began, he knew the end. And this is what he says to us even about our lives. He says to us that even before we were formed in our mother's womb, he knew us. He knew when it would begin and he knows when it will end. So we have no need to, to fear. Only believe. Trust God. Be good and sincere stewards. We must be able to show by the way we live and the way we talk and the way we have our being that being alive is more than wanting the things of this world, more than having riches because we can't take it to heaven. So all those persons who are lining up to to get rid of folk in certain areas so that they can go and do their mining and become richer, become wealthier, they must understand that they are misusing God's resources. They're sufficient to go around. But some of us want to have so much more than others. And if we are not using it as God has designated it to be used, we will give an account. We will have to give an account for the work that we have done here. It doesn't make sense trying to hold on to the natural. 
we are encouraged to sow in the spiritual, to build in the spiritual, because it is only those spiritual things that we do when we, you know, when we love, and when we care, and when we share. All of this goes up and is added to our account. So that when he puts in his, his, his appearance, we will hear from him. Well done, thou good and fearful steward. Enter in to the joy of our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. May we acknowledge you, God, as the Almighty Father, who is able to do for us more than we can ask, think, or even imagine. When we think of creation, we will fully understand that nothing is impossible with you. You created this universe from nothing. What a beautiful word. We give you thanks and praise for making us your children. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Redeemer, come with us, abide. Our hearts to thee we open wide. Let us thy inner presence feel, thy grace and love in us reveal. Thy Holy Spirit, lead us on until our glorious goal is won. Eternal praise, eternal fame be offered, Savior, to thy name. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And the people of God say, Amen.
thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.